Welcome to the Franchise Founders Podcast, where you'll hear right from the source how people like you have been able to buy and build their businesses across different industries all over the country. Dan Claps is the co-founder of Career Transition Leads, Nurture Assist, and Find a Business Online. Christian Dadalak is a franchise consultant with Find a Business Online, and he heads up business development for Career Transition Leads and Nurture Assist. He also runs an independent franchise consulting business, The Franchise Guys. Together, they formed relationships with hundreds of successful business owners who are excited to share their stories with you. Now, here are your hosts, Dan and Christian. All right. Well, welcome to the Franchise Founders Podcast. My name is Dan Claps, and my co-host here is Christian Dadalak. How you doing, man? I'm doing well today, man. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. It's a Saturday night in, in the city, and I've got nothing better to do than talk on the computer tonight. Hey, nothing, nothing more I'd like to do than talk about franchising, the opportunities that lie in franchising, where we're going in franchising and all that sort of thing. So I'm happy to be here. Same for me. Yeah, it's, it's a passion for both of us for, you know, pretty much driving us day to day, seven, six, seven days a week. Um, well, you know, what we wanted to do is just have this introductory, you know, introductory episode uh, where we just kind of get into what Franchise Founders is, what you'll get from our podcast, um, what our goal is as far as the podcast as well. And what you'll be hearing from us at, you know, Franchise Founders is stories of fantastic franchise entrepreneurs that started a business and decided to scale it through franchising. And, you know, Christian and I, you know, we're in the franchise consulting industry. We help people explore franchises. We help people franchise their business. We help, you know, really just the overall uh, decision of purchasing it and or investing into a franchise. Yeah. And, and some of the most difficult, the, the, the difficulty with buying a franchise and just having success in franchising in general is there's over 4,000 different franchise opportunities out there. And for a lot of people that don't know franchising, maybe they're coming from the corporate world, they're a corporate executive, they know their field, they know their craft, but they don't know franchising necessarily. And so it helps to sort of have a tour guide that knows franchising who can help you sort through your options because I think we can all agree that not all franchising, not all franchises are, are created equal. You know, it can be very difficult to separate the, the average brands, the more uh, call them mediocre type franchises versus the ones that are really exceptional that are dialed in, buttoned up, and the, that are the right kinds of opportunities for for a lot of uh, a lot of the clients that we work with. And so that's really what we provide is we provide a, a path. And really, the goal of this podcast is to provide some insights into stories like Dan had mentioned of successful franchise franchisors that have decided to franchise their business, successful franchisees, and then ultimately how to how to have success in franchising. And ultimately step one in many cases can be how to identify the right franchise for you. Mm, yeah. So true. Right. Not every franchise is created equal and finding the right opportunity is probably one of the most important decisions someone's going to make if they're going to get into business. Um, well, I guess let's start with, you know, origin stories. I mean, what got, what got you into franchising? I know you were previously in a business opportunity and, you know, want to just kind of, what got you into this, this, this crazy world of franchising? Yeah, man. So, gosh, you know, ever since I was 18, I mean, just going way back, I'm 27 now, but ever since I was 18, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and that book changed my life. From yeah. there, I'd been in, you know, net, different network marketing companies, always trying to figure out how to make a buck, not having a whole lot of success with it. You know, eventually from there, after trying my hand in a bunch of things, I ended up getting my financial licenses, um, you know, did did pretty well there. And I liked helping business owners. I had talked to all sorts of small business owners, middle-class families, and I enjoyed consulting. That's what I, I learned from that. I like consulting and advising people when it came to their money, but it's a very competitive space, obviously. It can be very saturated in many ways. And so a buddy of mine had asked me to, he and, he and his family own, it's not exactly a business opportunity, but they sell a piece of equipment that's a body contouring and fat loss treatment machine. And with that, they sell an entire business model of support behind it. So they'll send the customers, give training and give a lot of the support systems that a franchise might provide. And so they had asked me if on the side, I'd be interested in helping to sell their business 
And I did that for a little over two years, had some strong success with that, really enjoyed doing it, really enjoyed working and talking to people about business and helping them get into a business. But then the pandemic hit, obviously, right in 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that kind of threw a wrench into things. And due to the nature of that business, it is a, it's not a brick and mortar necessarily. You, you don't need a build out or anything like that, but it, it does require a physical office space. And for that type of business, people were a little bit nervous to get into that sort of business. And so lead flow interest level declined. And so I was kind of popping around and looking online and looking into something that was similar to what I had already been doing. And I had discovered uh, our, uh, our broker network that we're both a part of. So the IFPG, the International Franchise Professionals Group. And I discovered that there was such a career path as franchise consulting, which I had never heard about or didn't even realize it, but I've always been interested in franchising. You know, I saw, you know, the movie, The Founder, right, about Ray Kroc and McDonald's. And right, I right. had read Franchising for Dummies in the past. And I had looked at franchising uh, franchises in the past before. Um, and I'd always been interested in the model. I thought it made sense uh, to be in business for yourself, but not by yourself. And so I became a franchise consultant and I haven't looked back. It's been fantastic. I love advising people on these things. And um, it's just a great place to be, helping people find the right business for them, navigate the, the, the scary waters of, of finding the right business for you, connecting them with the right resources, and then equipping them with the right kinds of questions and insights so that they can ultimately come to uh, an educated decision. That's awesome. Yeah. Really cool. Uh, for me. Yeah, I know for you too. Yeah. Yeah. Similar. So I, I was always an entrepreneur um, or at least a want to be entrepreneur as a kid. Um, I remember being like five or six years old and having the lemonade stand and having, uh, this was how bad I was at business to start. I had, it was a dollar for one lemonade or 50 cents for two. Uh, and everyone would come up and they'd say, no, you're doing it wrong. It shouldn't be 50 cents for for two, right? It's a dollar for one. Um, and they would give me a dollar for, uh, they give me like $2 for one because they felt bad. And I actually learned a funny, you know, marketing lesson because I actually continued to do that, right? People would keep coming up. Eventually I knew it. Uh, it I, my sign was wrong, but people kept coming up and giving me $2 for one lemonade and because uh, <laughs> they felt sorry for me. That was kind of a funny marketing uh, experience, but I sold everything. I had, uh, you know, I played lacrosse in high school and you could get lacrosse balls for, you know, for a you know, dollar or so, dollar 25 at the, at the store. If you bought them in bulk, you would, you know, 75 cents or, or even 50 cents sometimes. And so, you know, I would go and I'd buy bulk lacrosse balls at my allowance and then, and then sell them at school. Um, and I did that, you know, and just anything where I could create money, like out of nothing. That was always fascinating to me. Like I remember I had a job at the YMCA as a swim instructor in my early teens and it didn't matter if I made more money with the steady paycheck of working at the YMCA when I created money from an idea or from a venture that always excited me. You know, so in, in college, I started my first business in event staffing and uh, did that and really learned that I didn't have a business. I had a job. Uh, you know, it needed me for every single function to run. The clients only knew me. The employees only knew me. Everyone just only knew me. And uh, I learned a valuable lesson that I didn't have any systems. So uh, my father actually said, why don't you look into franchises, you know, and, and you know, and mentioned it and started looking. Um, I was really interested in Homevestors franchise. And I thought what they were doing was really cool. It was a lower investment. I had a little bit of money to, to put into something, but I really, I really fell in love with the way that they marketed the, the franchise to me. So just like you, I became a franchise. Uh, well, actually to start, I became a business broker. Um, and I thought if I could learn salespeople, if they learn a pro if they sell a product, they learn so much about it. And so I thought if I'm selling businesses, I'll learn more than anyone about business and, you know, P and and, uh, et cetera. And so I started there and quickly realized that franchises were a little more lucrative and investment for, for, for my clients. And so I became franchise consultant and, uh, seven years later, here we are. It's incredible, man. It's a quite the uh, quite the journey, and I, I feel the same way as far as creating money out of nothing and out of thin air. It's there's there's once you get one of my mentors in the uh, in the financial industry, and he hit it big. And when I say big, I mean like to the tune of you know his earnings were over a hundred million. And what he had always said to me is, once you taste 
your first commission check, you almost can never go back to a W-2 type income or working for somebody else because you realize once you have that skill where you know how to create that money, whether it's through sales or just business operations, running a business, scaling a business, there's no going back because you almost have a, like a weapon to make money at will. And if you figured out how to do that, and more importantly, if you figured out how to do that in a type of business that really helps and serves people and you can feel good about it and, and you're not losing sleep over it, you can be proud of it, then you kind of hit the jackpot. And I think that's what we both have with, uh, with the franchise consulting and the franchise industry, which is an industry unlike any other. Now, what do you like best about franchise consulting? I, I know you're very passionate about it. You, you know, what is it that motivates? What gets you out of bed every day with what you do? I think one thing is just dispelling a lot of the myths and misconceptions that a lot of people have about franchising. That's, that's fun for me because that's where I really feel like I'm bringing value to the table. Because for instance, a lot of people, they think, man, I have to have an industry, a background in the industry that I'm going to go into. Mm. You know, but if you think about it, do most people that become, a, just as an example, a McDonald's franchisee, do they, do they necessarily have experience flipping burgers or do they even need to have experience flipping burgers? Is that owner, that franchise owner, the one flipping the burgers, making the fries, working the drive through Probably not. And it's the same way for all kinds of different franchises. You don't need to have the background in that industry necessarily. You just have to have the relevant skills as far as leadership, management, maybe operations uh, experience, some sales experience, maybe depending on the brand and different brands are looking for different skills, but they want you to be the CEO of the business. They don't want you to be in the day to day necessarily. They want you to work on the business, not in it. You know, it's a cliche we've all, you know, heard at this point, but it, but there's yeah. some truth to that. And so that's one myth that's fun to dispel. The other one is food is or franchising is just food. There's a whole world out there beyond food. There's a franchise in almost every industry. It feels like, so it's, it's fun to help people to take people through that process, through that journey and show them the world of franchising. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting. Like one of my favorite CEOs is Bob Iger. He's the CEO of Disney. And, you know, if you think about him, he got into Disney, uh, you know, does he know how to write, you know, make film or write stories about princesses or run theme parks? No, he came in with the business acumen of a CEO and he can lead the company. Um, I always think about, for me, I lead about a hundred people in an organization and, um, if we were, we're in the franchise industry, but if we switch to painting or mental health or, you know, remediation or anything else, I would move in and I would do the same exact thing. I'd be managing KPIs, people, uh, casting a vision, holding people accountable, breaking down barriers, uh, providing resources. And, and really, you know, that's it. I'd be doing those same things just in another vertical and the people would be, you know, completing the jobs of painting or, you know, handyman or whatever the business is. Um, I joke around, I have a friend that called me once that he wanted to get out of what he was doing and he wanted to, uh, you know, get into a franchise. And he said, I said, what's really motivating you to do that? And he said, well, I'm always alone in a room doing what I do. And I want to, I want to own a franchise. And I explained, you know, at the very top, you're always going to be alone in the room sometimes, right? You're going to be on your computer. You're going to be doing zooms. You're going to be managing a P and L, but he was able to get into his community and run a business and lead people. And I think that our clients, you know, people that are buying a franchise, investing in a franchise, they, they just, they love people and they want to lead people. I was just going to say, I completely agree with that. And I think as long as they have the skills necessary to, to succeed and, you know, we can, we, there's a whole host of different franchises out there that, you know, that we can pair them with and, and, uh, and help them to navigate. And I think by listening to this podcast, they're going to hear some amazing stories of what it takes to succeed in franchising, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And, uh, and not just looking at what franchising is with rose color, uh, rose colored glasses, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I think, you know, the, the goal of this podcast is, you know, we talk to hundreds of brands, we learn about hundreds of brands, and then we, you know, we find the ones that are really special and we're going to be showcasing those brands and talking with those founders. So you can get to know their story, uh, you know, better. And you can, you know, you can see if you connect with that story. Um, and if that business makes sense for you, and if you're a franchisor, you know, you have the opportunity to hear from your peers, your, your founder peers that started, or maybe they've been through the challenges you're going through, you know, at the stage, maybe they've already been through and you can, you can learn from their story and 
you know, how they overcame, you know, a, a, you know, adversity, because the reality is every business has the same problems. It's the only difference is the size. So the bigger your business, right. The, the different, the problems, but usually no matter what industry, those problems are somewhat similar, right. A $1 million a year company has a lot different problems than a $20 million, right. But they're all relative. And, our franchise founders come from all kinds of different walks of life. They're going to be able to guide people and give that kind of, you know, uh, you know, stories on how, how to overcome those things. Absolutely. And I think another important point for, uh, for franchisors to check in too, is that I think the idea is to have some franchisees on as well. Right. So to hear, you know, pointers on how to refine their systems and uh, you know, get better. And, and again, just for people considering buying a franchise as well, get an idea of what a day in the life is like for a franchise owner and the types of challenges they deal with, but also some of the rewards that they, that they reap as well for having, you know, taken, taken the first step in a franchise ownership. And, um, and which I think is just, you know, I commend that because ultimately, you know, at the bottom line, franchising is a route to pursue the American dream. And what is the American dream? The way I define it, it's pursuing business ownership, you know, being able to control your own destiny, you know, nobody's putting their thumb on you control your lot in life create something out of nothing like we talked about earlier i, I just think it's such a, a noble uh, profession and a noble industry to be able to help you know the everyday american really achieve the american dream yeah so question for you five if you had to say the top five attributes you look for in identifying a franchise being lucrative what would you say those five things are you know, it really depends. I mean, I think that there are franchises in all sorts of different industries that can be successful, but I think a lot of it is you have to look for, you know, is there a key differentiator? That's, that's the number one thing, you know, because especially given the industry, maybe it's an industry that some people perceive as being saturated, but saturation doesn't necessarily, I won't say it doesn't matter necessarily, but if you have a, a strong differentiator that separates you from the competition or, you know, whether it's the type of client you serve or the way that you market or your process or systems, whatever it is, if you have a, a strong key differentiator and you can cut through the noise of the competition, you can be successful. So that's one key mm. thing that, that I really look for in a, in a franchise that I show is, is there a strong key differ, differentiator mm. Two, um, you know, and not, this isn't always the case. This is kind of a want, not a need necessarily, but ideally we like businesses that are low overhead, right? You know, businesses that, you know, cause one of the number one things that, you know, can kill businesses is having a ton of overhead. You look at a lot of the restaurants, you know, and, or even, you know, big box gyms over the course of the pandemic. I mean, they were hit really hard and in many cases through no fault of their own, but their bills, their expenses are very, very high. And if they don't have income coming in and they're, they're operating on razor thin margins, that's, that's a recipe for disaster. And we've, and we've seen that. So we, we like low overhead, we like high margins and we like the ability for a business to be semi absentee because most of our clients and most people that are looking to get into franchising, unless they they're in between jobs, they're not necessarily looking to jump ship right away and, and, you know, take this, what they perceive as a massive risk into, you know, starting a business, they'd like to be able to transition into it. They want to make a career transition. So semi-absentee ownership is helpful. So we like brands that offer that. And then, and I think the, the industry matters as well. How, how much is the industry growth uh, growing? Because again, a lot of people, they think there's like a fixed pie, right? You know, and you know, there's only enough for everybody, but if the industry is growing 5% a year, well, that pie is expanding at 5% a year. So there's more pie to go around. And so if you can tap into a market like that, an industry like that, then there's, then there's room for you. So industry matters. And then there's some of the other things that I mentioned as well. I don't know if that's five, but those are some, some important things to kind of look at in, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. So unique selling prop, you know, uh, position proposition, low overhead, semi absentee, that's three industry growth that like there's year over year growth for, as an aggregate industry. And then I would add for five, I, I would say, you know, a strong financial, you know, item 19 performance and then, you know, and the ability to validate that, right. That the franchisees of that system are happy. And, you know, if you ask them, would you do this again? Their answer is yes. You know, 10 times over. Um, you know, I, I agree. That's what we're really looking for 
together, you know, and, and that USP one's really important, right? So you know, no one wants to be selling something that's commoditized that everyone's already done or that you can save money, you know, oh, I'm just cheaper. I'm a cheaper cost than my competitor. No one wants to be in that business. You want to go from zero to one, you know, there was nothing and now there is, right? right. Compete um, on value, not on price. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, fantastic. I was just going to say, you mentioned item 19. So for those of us that don't know what that is, would you mind explaining that? Yeah, sure. Well, you know, what I love about franchises is all franchises are protected by the FTC. So the investor is protected by the FTC Fair Trade Commission. So when someone goes to make an investment into a franchise, before they're ever able to write a check and sign that franchise agreement, um, they have to first, uh, you know, review a franchise disclosure document. Uh, or the terminology is the FDD. And the, you know, the FDD is an agreement that um, the franchise disclosure document is a document that is, you know, it's not a page turner, but it's you know 200 page uh, document that has everything you want to know and need to know about the business from the financials to the total investment to if there were any lawsuits, they're all in there. If the founder had a bankruptcy, you know, hopefully not, but if they did, it's in there. Uh, information about the executive team, you know, you really, once you read that uh, franchise disclosure document and have your attorney, your franchise attorney look it over, you really know what you're getting into with that business, right? And you, you feel confident when you make the investment, which is great. Um, so what in that franchise disclosure document, there's what's called item 19. It's one of the items in the, in the, in the document. And item 19 are audited financials that the FTC regulate and review. And so, you know, you know, when you're looking at a franchise, you're looking at the item 19, those are audited financials that had to be provided by the franchisor to the government. And so that's what you're going to look at as far as the historical data of average performance of franchisees. Some will show you the low quartile gross revenue and profit. Some will show you the, you know, as you know, and then also the medium and, and median and the, the, at, you know, the highest, and then they create an average and you're able to really get an idea. And obviously you want to look at the average, right? You're going to go into a business thinking you're going to be the top. You're not going to be the worst, right? But you want to just see what is that medium, right? So then you can have an idea of what, you know, where you'll fall into. Definitely. Yeah. yeah and it's, uh, you know, some, and some franchises offer a more robust item 19 than others. And so that's why it helps to have somebody that's taking a look at the item 19 before and knows which, which brands do have uh, that strong historical performance. Yeah. Any, anything else that we, you feel like we should add or let people oh, know I, about what we want to do for the podcast or. We don't want to give too much away. We, we want right. to see everyone on the next episode and uh, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it guys. Nice to talk to you today, Dan. I'm really looking forward to uh, getting a lot of uh, cool, cool stories and franchise founders on the podcast with us. You as well. Thanks, everybody. All righty.